How's it going, everybody? My name is Matt Glenn, and I'm one of the co-owners of Ears Up Sound Design. Now, Ears Up is a company that focuses on sound design for location-based entertainment, such as theme parks, museums, live theater, and other large-scale installations where spatial audio is the norm. Now, this is why I was particularly excited when John reached out to me and asked me if I could do a review of Sound Particles' new plugin, Space Controller. Now, I've been using Sound Particles, the software, for a better part of a year now. It's a very unique tool that borrows the concept of particle effects and particle physics from VFX and applies it to sound. It allows sound designers to create tiny little grains of sound, define their behavior, and then create movement with those grains in a 3D space. Space Controller is a little bit more of a traditional panning plugin, but it does have some very exciting features and one that's particularly enticing for sound designers. So without further ado, let's dive in. So this is the view we get when we first pull up the plugin. And the GUI is divided into three basic sections. Center is what they call the views section. This left section is aptly called in the manual, the left section. And on the right, we have the inputs and output section. Now it's important to note that I'm gonna be showing the features visible when advanced options is turned on here. Turning it off simply reduces it down to a simplified feature set, uh, but all of the features available are shown when advanced options is turned on. Now the view section can be controlled in one of two coordinate types. Uh, in cube mode, you're given X, Y, and Z. X being the horizontal position, Y being the vertical position, and Z being the height. Now I'm gonna hold Option and double click to bring it back to the default position. In Sphere, you are instead given azimuth, which is the horizontal angle, elevation, which is the vertical angle and distance, which is the distance from the center of the sphere. Down below the view section, you'll find the panning modes. In mono mode, all of the inputs are down mixed to a single mono channel. Channel mode is similar except you see one object for each channel of the input. So if I were to change my input channel count from stereo up to 5.0, which is five channels, you'll see it's added three more objects. Rotation mode locks the input channels in a fixed spacing and allows you to rotate them circularly along the horizontal plane. And this is true in cube mode as well as sphere mode. Symmetric side mode creates a virtual mirror along the X and Y axis. So if I were to grab the left channel here, the right channel, its corresponding channel, will move in the opposite direction across the Y axis. If I was working with a 5.0 input, as I move the left channel, the right channel behaves in the same way, but left surround and right surround, well, you know, I gotta admit, I'm not quite sure what they're doing. Um, it seems like there's sort of a mirror along the X axis as well. Let's see what it looks like in cube mode. Yeah, it seems to be following some sort of algorithm that I can't quite figure out. In the left section here, you'll find a breakdown of the coordinates based upon whether you have cube mode or sphere mode selected. This allows you to dial in a specific coordinate if you so choose. Below each coordinate is a lock that allows you to lock that particular coordinate to whatever value you've set. In this case, I've locked X here. So as I move this object, that value never changes. Below that, is a gain value, which simply controls the input gain for this object. I can change which channel is selected by going to the menu up here. And now I can set a gain specifically for the right channel 
that's different than the left. The size parameter is similar to the influence for those who are familiar with Reaper's Reese Around or Reese Around Pan plugins. The higher the size parameter, the more speakers the object will play through. So let's change to a 7.1 arrangement. And you can see as I increase the size, the faint purple circle around the left object increases, meaning that if I have this object panned here, the sound will play from these three speakers and possibly a little bit in the rear surrounds as well. Whereas if I reduce the size back down, this sound will play through fewer speakers, especially once you get it closer. Activating auto Z slash elevation creates an automatic behavior for the object such that when you bring it closer to the center of the room, it automatically changes the height depending on which of the two dome modes you have selected. Full sphere mode places the listener at the center of a virtual sphere. As you move the object from the edge to the center, it automatically gives it either a positive or negative Z value, depending on what you prefer. By contrast, half dome mode assumes that the listener is standing on a ground and creates a virtual half dome over their heads. In this mode, moving the object from the edge to the center only creates positive Z values. Activating magnet mode forces the object to snap to the nearest speaker. This can be really handy if you want to place an object in one speaker only and not allow it to bleed into adjacent speakers. The input and output section allows you to control the size and style of input and output going into and coming out of the plugin. The inputs menu offers mono, stereo, binaural, multiple surround sound formats from 5.1 all the way up to 22.2, and first to sixth order ambisonics. The output menu is nearly identical, except that it doesn't offer mono as a choice. Below each menu, a corresponding VU meter showing input and output levels. And below that are buttons that allow you to activate and deactivate individual channels of the input or the output. Clicking the word input or output below the meters will bring up the corresponding button set. And finally, in the bottom right corner is an overall output level for the plugin. So now let's talk about the most exciting feature for me, which is the mobile phone control. This is particularly cool because it gives you the ability to control your pans in X, Y, and Z using your mobile phone's built-in accelerometer. In the plugin, clicking Wi-Fi setup will bring up a QR code. In the app, click the cog in the top right-hand corner and click scan QR code. And just like that, your devices are paired. So now if I click to pan, you'll see that the object is moving on screen. You also notice that as I rotate it left and right, it's moving left and right, but also pointing up and down will change the Z value. Now, when you're working in cube mode, you may not want to always be using all three coordinates. Say you don't want it to move in the Z axis. Well, it's as simple as typing in zero, locking the Z axis, and now that coordinate will not change based on your phone's movement. Now, let's say that you want to control more than one space controller plugin, but you don't necessarily want the same exact panning moves to happen in both. In that case, you can use up to four different Wi-Fi channels to control plugins separately. If I have both set up as channel one, then panning with the phone will control both instances. But if I set the second plugin to channel two, all I need to do in the app is click channel two, and I can control that plugin independently from the first plugin that's set up on channel one. 
Now, if you wanted to recalibrate the orientation of the phone in your mix room, the app gives you a set front command. All you need to do is place your phone approximately in the center of your listening area, point it to what you would consider to be the front, and press the button. And you'll see on the app that the small dot has placed itself in the center, and now you've recalibrated with a more defined center. Okay, so I've pulled some sound effects into a Reaper session. Let's give it a listen. So for the first demo, I've got a footsteps track here. I'll pull the volume up. Let's take a look at sound particles. I've got this set up in mono mode because it's a mono track and it's outputting to binaural so you can hear the panning effects more easily. Got my phone set up. Let's give it a listen. Now I've got the Z axis locked off right now, but if I were to unlock that and get to listen to the binaural algorithm's interpretation of up and down. Which, you know, it's okay. It, this is obviously a very subjective thing because everybody's head is shaped differently, different headphones have different results. I'm getting a much stronger result for the left and right and front rear than I am for the up and down. But that's fairly typical even with legit binaural recordings anyway. Generally speaking, it sounds pretty good. I like the sound of their binaural algorithm. I think it's very usable for mixing in headphones. Uh, even if what you're doing in headphones is only temporary, it'll give you an idea of how it will sound once you take it onto a larger speaker rig. Now let's take a listen to another sound. I have a helicopter set up here because how can you possibly have a spatial audio demo without a helicopter? Let's give it a listen. So let's talk about some of the things that I liked. First of all, as you could see, setting up the mobile device was incredibly easy. The QR code integration is really effective. And as long as your Wi-Fi network is behaving well, you will go from nothing to up and running in less than a minute. The flexibility of having the different styles of panning is incredibly useful. When you're just using channel-based panning mode, it can be a little difficult to achieve effects like spinning around in a circle but having that rotation mode, in addition, very, very handy. The GUI in general is very intuitive. It's easy to look at. You know pretty much from a glance exactly what each function does. There's not too much that's hidden or buried in menus. Now this may not affect all users, but for me, I appreciate that the binaural algorithm actually sounds pretty good. I could easily imagine myself doing a headphone mix at home and then taking it into the studio and up mixing from there. And being able to present either as a pretty good facsimile of what I'm going for. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features that I'd like to see included or improved in the future. The first one, and this is a very big one for me in the type of work that I do, is that you can't create your own custom speaker layout. With the projects that I work on, the speaker systems don't quite conform to one of these presets that are available. Now, this is an interesting omission because in sound particles of the software, you can actually create your own arrangement. So I would love the option of creating a custom speaker rig in addition to the presets that are available. The roll the dice feature in the corner, it might be a little bit of a gimmick unless you really don't mind 
completely randomizing your result. Sometimes it can be nice to surprise yourself, but if you want to have even a little bit of granular control of what gets randomized, you sort of can't do that. So let's say I wanted to randomize the X and Y position of my uh, objects, but I didn't want to randomize the height, the Z. Well, I can't really do that. Um, if I'm in the channel mode, it's going to randomize all three. With those items aside, honestly, I don't have a lot of other criticism. It's a very nice plugin. It's very clearly laid out. And uh, with the introduction of the cell phone as a controller, you're opening up an incredible tool, not just for speeding up your workflow, but for engaging with your mixing process in a more physical, artistic way. Even my joystick controller, which gives me significantly more control than a mouse and a keyboard, still doesn't engage in the same way that physicalizing your pan move does with the cell phone. So would I recommend Space Controller? In short, yes. It's a great product. I really enjoyed the interface. I find it very intuitive. What I will say is it's not a tool for everybody. The standard version lists at $100, but it only gives you stereo, binaural, 5.1, and some ambisonic capability. In order to unlock all of the different channel formats, it's a $400 one-time price tag, which is affordable if this is your job, if, if panning and mixing for things like post-production are what you do every day, then it's well worth having a tool that makes it quicker for you. However, if you're just exploring uh, the spatial audio world, yeah, I'd, I'd maybe download the trial and give it a shot, see if it's really something that helps you because $400 is a lot to invest in a panner that shares a lot of the features you may find in the built-in panners in the DAW that you use. But with that said, kudos to Sound Particles. It's a great product and I look forward to playing with it on future projects.